After the Jews made the golden calf, there was a need to uh, solidify or deepen or make more practical our connection to God and uh, a need to bring God closer to this world, to our world. So God tells Moshe, construct a tabernacle, which is literally like a traveling uh, building, a little more than a tent, as we'll soon see, uh, which they carried with them for 40 years. And then eventually brought in with them into Israel. The Mishkan was a very heavy, um, very detailed piece of construction. It was made of upright beams, extremely heavy, tall. They stood side by side and made up the walls of this tent of meeting, as it was called. That's where the ark was kept. That's where the menorah, the candelabra was. That's where the small altar was for the burning of incense. The, uh, the top, the covering, was made of heavy uh, wool and cloth of different colors. It was, a, it was so heavy, by the way, that only Moshe could put it together. These upright wooden beams sat in a, a base made out of copper. The practical purpose, of course, was that the wood doesn't get wet and, and, uh, and moldy. But that served as the foundation. That's what the whole Mishkan stood on. Each board had a cap on the bottom. Uh, that actually helped join the, the, the beams. And in order to make those caps, the Jews were asked to donate a half shekel. Everyone, regardless of their wealth or lack of, had to bring a half shekel. And no matter how rich you were, you couldn't give more than half shekel. The other parts of the Mishkan were also made from donations, gold, silver, whatever. But there, God says, according to the generosity of your heart, each person gave according to their capacity, according to their generosity. In other words, everyone gave according to the individual uh, motivation, inspiration, and so on. But when it comes to these foundational caps at the bottoms of the, of the beams, everyone had to give the exact same amount, no less and no more. The moral of that is that when you come to fun, foundational stuff, to fundamental stuff, everyone is equal. An example for it would be the first prayer we say when we get up in the morning. The foundation of the day. You build your day on the first prayer that you say getting up in the morning. The mode ani. I acknowledge before the living and existing God who has returned my soul to me. Great is his uh, trustworthiness. Uh, there's no mention of God's name. 
and everyone says it equally. When it comes to the rest of the prayers, you know, there are those who understand the prayer better, they have deeper intentions, they have deeper insight, they have more emotion about it, they feel it more, they see it more, and so on. And then there are those who see it less, feel it less, and so on. But the Modani is a foundation, and in that we are all equal. When it comes to fundamentals, there are no distinctions. No Jew can be more Jewish than another Jew, because fundamentals are universal. Serving God is a universal thing. Everyone is obligated or has the opportunity to serve God, and in that we are all equal. How we do it, how well we do it, okay, that's not fundamental. That's already uh, adjectives. So the moral of, of the construction of the, of the Mishkan was that everyone was to give the same amount. No one can claim to have more of a connection to the to the Mishkan, to the tent of meeting, than anybody else. You can have a greater appreciation, you can have a greater understanding, but you can't have a greater uh, relationship or a greater connection. Our connection is fundamental and it's equal in all. But what's also interesting is that what was that amount that all people gave equally. Not a shekel, a half shekel, a half dollar. What is the purpose of that? If it's because a whole dollar was too much for some people, well then why make it a half dollar, make it a quarter? In other words, if you want to make it as easy and as, avail as, as doable for everyone, even the poorest of the poor, well, a half dollar is not the lowest you can go. Make it a quarter. Make it, make it a tenth. The message behind the half dollar is in, in the word half. It's like God saying, you give half and I'll give half and we will meet in the middle. The purpose of the Mishkan is for God to be present, for his presence to be felt on earth. So God says, I will dwell in this Mishkan. That's my half of the deal. You give your half, half of a shekel. So even if everyone could afford a full shekel, that would not be symbolic or, or express, express properly the, the, the partnership here. So it's as if God is saying, I am half, and you're the other half, and together we are whole. Which is an amazing statement for God to make. But the imagery is very, very real. In fact, we're told that when Moshe, God told Moshe to ask for a half shekel, Moshe was puzzled. So God showed him a half shekel made out of fire. And he said, this is what I mean by half shekel. And of course, the commentaries all ask, what was Moshe puzzled by? He never saw a half dollar? What was it he didn't understand? What a half dollar looks like? And God had to show him? 
And if God did have to show him what a half shekel looks like, why one made out of fire? <laughs> That's not the way a, re a physical half shekel looks. Not made out of fire. So the Rebbe explains, Moshe wasn't puzzled by what a half dollar looks like. Moshe was puzzled by how can we be half? God is half and we're an equal half? How is that even possible? And how is it possible that by giving a half shekel, which is a physical coin, we become connected to God like equal partners? That's what God had to explain to Moshe. Not what a coin looks like, but how a coin could actually make that kind of connection. So he showed him a coin made out of fire. It's not the physical coin, it's the warmth, the enthusiasm, the fire with which we serve God. It's like God does a, a lot more for us than we can do for him. So what is this half and half business? The half and half is the enthusiasm that God has for this relationship should be reflected by our enthusiasm for the relationship. And although God's enthusiasm is infinite and ours is finite. But enthusiasm is enthusiasm. A huge flame and a little fire, a little candle, they're both hot. That's the partnership. His enthusiasm for us and our enthusiasm for him make for a whole being. So when we do a mitzvah, partnering with God, the, uh, the bond that results comes from the warmth and the enthusiasm with which we do it. Without that, we're being obedient, but we're not being partners. Like the most common complaint in a partnership, two people running a business, the most common complaint is, I worry about it all the time and you don't seem to care as much as I care. So God says, you care as much as you can, I care as much as I can, and in that we are equal partners. We're both doing our best.